This is Dr. Mimi Lam from the Renal Division of Metro Health Medical Center, and I would like to explain how to classify hyponatremia by its pathophysiologic mechanisms. The important thing to remember about hyponatremia is that it can develop only when there is a problem getting rid of water. When a normal person drinks water, their plasma osmolality goes down just a little, 1 to 2 percent, maybe from 285 to 282, and even that little decrease is enough to suppress ADH secretion. Water reabsorption in the collecting tubules is then impaired, water stays in the tubules, and the result is a large output of very dilute urine, which returns piasm to normal so that hyponatremia does not occur. So the ability to excrete free water or water without solute is crucial to preventing hyponatremia. Dilute urine with free water in it cannot be made in the proximal tubule, where fluid remains isotonic to plasma, about 300 milliosmolar, or in the hairpin turn of the loop, where it becomes concentrated to as high as 1200 milliosmolar. Dilute or hypotonic fluid can be made only in the ascending limb of Henle, and the distal convoluted tubule. Here, solute is reabsorbed without water following, and the fluid becomes dilute down to about 50 milliosmolar. If no ADH is around, water stays in the collecting tubule instead of being reabsorbed, and lots of free water can then be excreted. How much free water can a person make? Glomerular filtrate is made at the rate of about 150 liters per day. After it passes through the proximal tubule, where two-thirds is reabsorbed, about 50 liters is left. By the time it reaches the distal convoluted tubule, about 24 liters remain, which, when no ADH is around, becomes 24 liters per day, or about one liter per hour, of dilute urine. So what can go wrong to put a person at risk for developing hyponatremia? Again, Remember that in order to prevent hyponatremia, you have to be able to excrete solute-free water. But you will have trouble doing this, for example, if you don't have enough filtrate to start with, such as with AKI or CKD. Or if you reabsorb too much proximally and don't have enough left to make dilute urine out of later, as with sodium-retaining states such as volume depletion and heart failure, which activate the renin-angiotensin system and sympathetic nervous systems, increasing proximal reabsorption. Or, if you can't reabsorb solute in the thick ascending limb to make a dilute urine, for instance, if your solute transporters are disabled by a loop diuretic. Or, if you can't suppress ADH secretion. This means that you will reabsorb water in the collecting tubule and the dilute tubular fluid won't have a chance to turn into dilute urine. This happens with ADH secretion in volume depletion because here intravascular volume is being protected by reabsorbing water even at the expense of developing hyponatremia. It also happens in the syndrome of inappropriate ADH associated with lung tumors, etc. Note that hyponatremia can develop in patients with low high, or normal ECF volume, which is the way that hyponatremic patients are often classified clinically. Severe volume depletion increases the risk of hyponatremia because it impairs free water excretion by decreasing GFR due to vasoconstriction and decreased renal blood flow, increasing proximal reabsorption due to renin angio and sympathetic activity, and stimulating ADH secretion, not allowing it to be turned off. Heart failure and other edema-forming states also result in intense vasoconstriction, renin angioactivation, and ADH secretion. SIADH simply does not allow ADH secretion to be turned off ever and causes problems in that way. And diuretics, such as loop diuretics, impair solute uptake in the ascending limb of Henle or the distal convoluted tubule and thus impair the ability to make a dilute urine they may also create some degree of intravascular volume depletion and activate the three mechanisms mentioned earlier. 
So, don't forget, regardless of a person's volume status, hyponatremia can develop only when there is a problem getting rid of water. 